Lakeside Plus is the greatest fan experience for anyone who wants to expand beyond just watching YouTube videos. Everything that happens from a creative standpoint for the Sidemen Entertainment brand, that is a team of 15 people. Your HR team is probably bigger than that. You'd be stupid to claim that it's not impressive. I see Josh's name on my phone. It's not a good vibe. And then JJ, come up on the screen. Me, me. We're not live. We're about to walk out on the pitch. You won't believe it. I'm working with Fortnite. I'm starting a new life. I have an insane commitment to what I do. If you just literally put the hard work in, you might not succeed, but the chances increase drastically. The Sidemen represent something so big in the culture. Many childhoods, sad nights, and that's what you see at the ground. This is where you get to see them not putting their complete YouTube personalities on. They don't have to be happy all the time. They don't have to do the smile through the thumbnail. For those who don't know, can you just give a very brief overview as to you and how you started working with the Sidemen? Yeah, my name is Victor Bengtsson. The accent that will slip now and then during this podcast comes from Sweden. I've really tried hard for many years to try to clean it up, but you'll hear me say jogging or jumper <laughs> or something where the J's fall into a, an abyss of linguistic mm. problems, you know. But how I joined the Sidemen, my journey up there, I've been in digital solutions for the last 10, 10 years now. And it's been on a journey that was never really planned to be. Um, my real first thing was working in a small company that I uh, held ownership in when I was about 23, 24. Uh, so that was me around the same time I was like getting into uni. That company was cow, uh, called Cow Funding, a pun on crowdfunding. And what you did was crowdfund animals. That company, I worked for that for two years with uh, one collaborator there, a, a Dutchman called Gertjan Deleman, who was instrumental in me understanding, like, if you just literally put the hard work in, you might not succeed, but the chances increase drastically. Uh, that man, I don't know where he is today. Last <laughs> time I heard he was doing something absolutely amazing at Ikea. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, G. He, he knew exactly what we were doing. Mm. Uh, that led to me working with a couple of friends who were at eight creative agencies, um, helped out on a couple of projects they were doing, opened my mind more towards the creative agency, that sort of vibe. And through connections, I ended up speaking to some people at Volvo. And Volvo were also into this digital solution. Everyone was kind of in this midst of how do we use digital? Because we have cars and they're super physical. Or we have meat, which is super physical. Product is physical by default. That was when my brother came to me and told me there's a video game that's come out and it's different to all other video games and that was Fortnite. I was not necessarily that into gaming anymore. I, I was like, I'd, I've been a gamer throughout my life. We played a lot of video games having fun growing up, friends, my brother, whoever it may be. But that game was really like, he told me and promised me this will be different. I think he at some point was like, I think Drake's playing it. I remember like, okay. <laughs> oh, Drake. Drake. <laughs> uh, so what I did after that Christmas when he started talking about it, if I don't mis misremember here, I asked him how good he was and he was like, I'm the second best in the world right now. I was like, that's crazy. But he was essentially competing against this one guy who then became massive called Ninja. Uh, that could have been a tough one for my J. Yeah, you I did that. I well think I survived that, that one. Then he basically convinced me. So I said, what if I just managed you in classic talent management ways? And that is my first step really into talent management, which becomes me taking care of my brother at the stage of like, like he's no one at this mm. point. I'm at Volvo at the time. I'm finishing up some, my stuff at uni. And he just, he keeps on killing people in this video game. <laughs> Uh, and I started thinking I could like put a team together. Um, so I had this little tool set up, which was just collecting the API from Instagram and open just follower account. And you have like a social blade or whatever. Mm. Uh, and then on the other end was Fortnite tracker. And then we just put like one question to the, to this very simple tool that if someone has an increase in percentage in amount of kills and Instagram followers, I'll hit them up. Mm. So, uh, my, I used my brother's account. We started speaking to people. He was pr uh, practi practicing with them, what we call scrimming in, in the gaming world. And they basically started playing together. We put together a four. I pitched to Fnatic. I pitched it to Face Clan. I pitched it to all the big esports orgs. And Fnatic was the one that was most keen. And then I just said, listen, you're going to have to bring me across to, mm. to across the pond into England. Uh, so we joined Fnatic together at that point with three other players. Um, one of them uh, became now probably the biggest gamer in Italy. So his name is Giorgio Calandrelli, uh, nicknamed Power. And you found him through in, through your through your tracker? Literally, we he. I remember seeing a picture of him the first time. I've said this in another interview where I was just like, he was just so good looking, man. I was just like, bro, you, we can put you on. <laughs> you're going to win either way. No, no. You're, <laughs> yeah. you, if you're Fortnite or not. Half a <laughs> yeah. will be fine. I love that man. He called me today and he said, I need you here tomorrow. I'd fly mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. In mm -hmm. my career, 
would not be anywhere where it is today without my brother opening that door and power becoming who he became. As a business, what does it mean to become someone in that world? Fortnite was so different to the other video games because if you're deep in the the esports scene or like competitive gaming, um, there's there's a lot of talk about money and less so generated money. Yeah. So people funding things and hoping for the best, not necessarily straight revenue drivers that actually create substantial money for the company. So when I say becoming something, it meant that first summer, there was a big first early competition in Fortnite. I think we played home maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 or something. And for my brother, small town Sweden, mm. me, it was like, Whoa. bro, you're, you're rich. <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> like you, you made it. We made some waves there and... There was a real lack of Italian players at the time, so he kind of put that on, to- on, 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 like put that on himself to become that face outwards, which then led to him getting a lot of stream viewership on Twitch. Obviously, opened the eyes of a lot of brands in Italy. They were like, "Wait, what was happening?" Here? Yeah. yeah. Um, so fast forward a year and a half. When I speak about making it, he had a billboard across Rome or Milan. I can't recall which one now, which just had him literally standing in his own custom Adidas sneakers, the same way JJ now had mm. one here. He had one in Italy. In 2016, 17, that kind of 2018, time. 2018, 19, okay. I think. At, by the end of that year, we had a, co- a collaboration with Ben & Jerry's in Italy. And then Ben & Jerry's is like, that's a huge brand mm. for someone who was killing Fortnite players like 10 months earlier. I worked with them and helped set up the talent department at Fnatic for about three and a half years. We obviously had a lot of stuff Going, going within the Fortnite uh, division, the Fortnite World Cup 2019 is still one of the craziest events I've ever been to. Um, and we, we, we ran that department and did some really good stuff that expanded. I took on more talent. Uh, and at one point, I'd th- say I was managing maybe 20, 25 talent, more like a traditional talent agency. Uh, there were some restructures in the company, which led to us building out a couple of digital platforms like the Fnatic Network. And kind of in the middle of all of that, I had been starting a move towards more like international expansion. So I'd been quite active in Japan because Apex Legends. I'd been quite active in India because of PUBG Mobile. There were a lot of different projects happening at the same time. And through that moment in PUBG Mobile, I met Aaron. And we were supposed to set Who? up... To... Oh, Aaron, <laughs> <that O'Neil>. guy? <laughs> Aaron O'Neill. He works with us today. And we met and had drinks, I think. They basically invited me over. We had one time we really met, maybe two, three meetings, but we hit it off kind of. Uh, and then... Yeah, six months later, I'm sitting at the rooftop at Soho House, and you're pitching like, "We have an idea. Here's a blank page. What would you do if you were building a membership <laughs> club?" Empty notebook. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "You know what? I have a couple of ideas." From that little meeting we had there, I think it's about two months later. I'm in a room with the side digital room. Soon, mm. they're still still that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the boys, and I'm pitching my vision and idea for this, and um, they said yes. Yeah, and. 72, two, 72 days later, we launched the Side Plus. 72 days. It's two years old, right? Two days ago. Two, yeah, Side yeah, Plus or something literally. Like so bang on the anniversary into our third year. And Victor comes in with a literal notebook of like, my, I remember my notebook somewhere in, in my house with just like Side Plus. It's just an empty page. What would you do? 72 days later, it turns out to be what it is now. What is Side Plus and why is it so important to the to the fan base and to the side men? From that moment onwards, we were quite clear on, okay, we think it will work, but how do we speak to this group that we, this is not us trying to build a Netflix, right? That was not the goal here. We're trying to create a fan service that's going to speak to a very key audience. Um, and today, Side Plus is, I would say, the greatest fan experience for anyone who wants to expand beyond just watching YouTube videos for someone. This is where you get to see them not putting their complete YouTube personalities on. They don't have to be happy all the time. They don't have to do the smile for the thumbnail. It is the more intimate relationship of watching how a YouTube group actually produces the biggest productions in the space, right? So that's the BTS, for example. It's them being allowed to do some slightly more risky pieces, like we can curse, we can say things, don't worry about demonetization. Uh, So they can do a little bit more of a yeah, I guess more of like sitting at a pre-party with your friends than having to be completely, let's let's say like completely controlled and thinking about everything you say and do. You can have a little mm. bit more freedom on there. Uh, and then obviously the key was to understand what the, um, the hardcore fan base would want. It is a chance to consume content that is not catered to the current meta of YouTube. It's more old school, it's a longer form, and it's for the people who want to get closer. What was it like the day at launch for you? I remember obviously very vividly. For anyone who has been in launches, anyone who works in entertainment, anyone who works on anything that really has like key moments and it's like consolidated into this one moment, 
um, will know the pressure that comes with it, no matter how prepared you are and how solidified you've like literally put up the defenses around everything, you're still going to be pissing yourself with nervousness when you get there. That day, I remember as well, like we don't really know each other mm. at this point, right? Mm. You, Aaron, me, and Sam. 72 days. 72 <laughs> days, we've actually known each other. I think my contract came in two weeks prior. I remember where I'm sitting, it is an hour prior, I've got everyone online. Oscar, who you will obviously work closely with now, you have seen the talent that's come out of that, man. Yeah. Everything has been consolidated into this one single button, one click, that basically makes this entire thing go live. And then obviously we have the promotion gone out over the past week. We've explained everything. There's a lot of noise. Our entire marketing plan up until the launch has been about no marketing. I'll just drop random clips on TikTok and we hope they take off, right? Mm. Which they did. So when it goes live, I remember pressing it. I look for the button to go like site live. So it's like, I know that it's alive. And then I closed my eyes and I just sat in my living room and I'm like, please, 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 please. Then my, that my girlfriend at the time walks in and she goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, I am literally praying. Can you please leave me alone? Uh, and then, uh, and I'm looking Shut at her and door. she's like, it will be fine. I'm like, I, once again, I mentioned this, if you have been at the head of something mm -hmm. and you are the end point of blame, if it goes bad, you cannot defend yourself fully from what those feelings feel like. You're putting this in the hands of all these people and all you can do is just hope and, and, and the, pray the, that it works. The back end of this does not have a go live test what the site will look like. Mm. They didn't have that infrastructure. It's on or off. Once it's live, there is also no way to take it off. You have to delete. So we can't go offline. We go delete. Could you imagine? Could you imagine you go live? There's like a massive area. You have to delete the whole thing. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Try again. I press the refresh on the back end because there is like 15 mm. seconds pass. And I see it's like seven subscribers. And I'm like, mm. seven? I'm just looking for my phone. Like, I, I can't wait to say like, Josh or JJ, come up on the screen. Me, me. <laughs> And I'm just like, you know, just 72 days. I've already fucked you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a good vibe. And then it was because the traffic was such a vast amount of people on the site, right? Mm. And there was such a fan reception. We had gone live. I remember we sat up that entire night until we could make one tweet, tweet from the official accounts that were very fresh at that point, just to say good morning to the Australians who would have come up now so they could see the ads and they could see like the promo. So they're like, hey guys, welcome mm. to the club. And that is my last thing I do that day did you sleep that night i slept that night incredibly well it was one of the best sleeps i've had but once the first new number came up on the screen mm. i lay down on my floor and i started like shaking and i put on middle child by j cole and then i'm rapping this in my head laying there like you're him bro you're fuck him bro <laughs> uh yeah 72 so, days 72 days you're him and then oscar is going like everyone seems to like the Yes, bro. It looks <laughs> sick. Uh, we've obviously come a long way since me, Oscar, mm. sat in that room with Brad. I mean, literally the next day because of the amount of customer support tickets that came in, we had to find a customer support team. So that like in 24 hours, we found our customer support team. Shout out Emmy, who for the first six months pff, took, uh, took on yeah, took so many lot. things. Easily overlooked and underappreciated. Yeah. But yeah, she had a lot to do there. And it, for, for basically three months, it was us. And then uh, obviously, I remember our group chat. It was like, <laughs> Boys, this worked. This worked very well. <laughs> this was good. Mm. I think we can trust in each other. Mm. And I think that set the bar for us for at least as a some form of some yeah. form of unit. But also, you know, you get through 70, 72 days of a blitz of working with, you know, working together, you know, remotely. I think a lot of it at the time, it succeeds, it works. Yeah. The Cybern are happy. The new community on this platform are very happy. Yeah. You're, you know, you're serving them great content. They're loving it. And actually, you know, you've got, the sentiment you wanted which is the easiest thing to mess up and I think we probably take it for granted because the boys are so good at what they do the team is so good behind the scenes at what they do you're so fantastic at what you do that everything we do lands well right because yeah. there's a lot of thought and process that's gone into it but as we very clearly know if you don't get that right you're going to get completely destroyed and the reputational damage of doing one of these things and getting it wrong yeah. is tremendous yeah, and actually side plus you look at it on the day and you're like wow people love this like, what yeah. was that feeling like for you? We had the biggest worry right and that is, I think, a lot of people mm. have like, in our... Maybe it's wider than just us, but the idea of selling out. You're now asking for money for something. Mm. Uh, even value. Though, value, and you're, you're saying to them, I know you have seen this stuff before. You've seen someone put something out and ask you for money, and you have feel, felt like, that's not really what I wanted for that money. But we had been very open from the get-go, right? There are seren members. The price is six ninety nine. We're giving 99p to Harry. 
The rest of us get one pound. And that was like the marketing plan for it. Over here, you have the Netflix at seven ninety nine. you get a, a bunch of movies. The problem with Netflix was always like, if you buy Netflix, you're consuming 0.3% of the, the platform. For us, we wanted people to consume 100% of this platform at the time of launch. Um, with Spotify, you get every song in the world for nine ninety nine. A Twitch sub, however, is four ninety nine. You get nothing for that. You get to support your favorite creator, maybe. You get some smileys or emojis or whatever. Mm. So here's your opportunity to go somewhere in between. And we knew that we needed to make money to keep the team running. And we needed to, like, in all honesty, if we had no profit coming out of that, it doesn't fly. What is it? You don't. You have no money to invest. You have no money to build the, which we'll get into, what it is today. Yeah, yeah, of course. When I looked at how the fans received it, they were like, wait, there's quite a lot of episodes on here already. Good choice. I think that was a conversation that we had on mm. four of us, that mm. we need to have stuff on it already. Um, and then the fact that the camera quality, the uh, introduction, introductory... Uh, the thumbnails. Like, the thumbnails, everything was just like slightly better, not necessarily cut or edited, but it was pricier. It was premium. We spent so many hours trying to nail that value proposition to the oh, point where it almost drove everyone insane. Like, because there was such a concern naturally about making sure that it was worth the money. I mean, English people are very funny around money anyway and yeah. pricing and all that sort of stuff. And we're naturally cynical. So we were, of course, naturally very cynical about, yeah. okay, this isn't worth it. How do we make it more worth it? How do we bake so much value into it yeah. that no one can ever complain about the price? And what we found, I remember on launch, was that when it launched, you had people in the comments going back and forth like backing up the fact that it was good value have you looked on the platform have you seen how many shows there are yeah. have you seen what it looks like have you seen what this is becoming it's not even just content there's giveaways and there's other things that are in, in the pipeline and you had that kind of uh, that validation from random people who don't care They're, they will slate it if it's bad and then when it launched they were like actually this you got this right of course we had to do a lot of like admin stuff that we don't talk about it's not boring stuff but the idea was that this is fine where we are now fine now the pipeline and the pipeline was rough it was like, we want to be able to get to a certain point where we can launch an app version of this quite like quite quickly after we've done the desktop version. Because the first thing that came out was like, I want to watch this when I'm in bed. I want to watch this when I'm on my train journey. I want to watch this when I'm on a bus, whatever it is, right? I want to yeah. take it with me. So like, that you was You see the a, percentage of mobile on YouTube, right? Yeah. You know that that's the consumption habit of this audience, right? But it's also an investment to make, to build an app, right? So we need mm -hmm. to see the proof in the pudding like when this goes live, will we have an audience that want to do it? Uh, but the only feeling I had on launch day was like, thank God, like I did not think this was going to play out the way it played out. In my head, you build a worst case scenario always. Mm -hmm. And then when it's done, you sk just slap around and go like, Jing, back, okay, I'm back mm -hmm. in. Okay, mm -hmm. next 90 days, we're going to do a Halloween special. We're going to launch an app. We're going to start building out programs that can like potentially get on there next year. Uh, and I remember like, us sitting that we had a tiny, tiny room in, in East London. I was there every day. Mm. It was just like thinking about like, what do we do here? How do we make this better than it already is? It was incredibly <laughs> like one desk. Yeah. <laughs> and then the set, the, the sidecast set behind, right? Yeah, yeah. One yeah. desk, the sidecast set, and then two producers, John and James, mm. who literally stood like huddled together behind the cameras. And then now, right? So bring people up to speed. Two years later, where is it? We expanded team quickly and because we saw that the fans wanted it, they liked it. Uh, we saw responses on like episodes that we didn't think we were going to get real responses on. The BTS was actually something people really wanted to see. They wanted to get closer to the boys. And once we had started pushing out Finer Fucked, which is obviously a show that launched later on, uh, where we're at now two years later is that we've, we've, we're about to launch our first Side Plus Originals, which is like a it's separate entity within the, the Side Plus experience and product that has its own team connected to it, its own budget. It's going to be like a complete step up from everything else that's on that platform. Mm. You're getting like a full scale, like limited series mm. about something that has happened, yeah, well now, four or five days ago, the biggest YouTube event in history. We've captured that and we're gonna tell these fans about this journey. Mm. And they're invited into like the close, close rooms. So we now have suddenly higher production value, but we're keeping that close to the fan experience. And alongside that, we're launching Side Plus Saturdays, which is essentially things that are not big enough to be a full on blown, like full blown Side Plus Sunday. Can we take that and let the boys do it in the way they would if it was not YouTube meta? So it will be like a Side Plus Sunday that you get additional to your Side Plus mm. subscription. So already now in the next six months, you'll suddenly have all the shows you already have, but you'll also see the the, the limited series that will be coming in and then the Side Plus Saturday. Mini, a mini Sideman Sunday, essentially. Yeah, I had a council inspection at my apartment the other day and uh, the woman comes in, super professional, uh, really nice. She just walks around, tests the, she's gonna test the fire alarms, look at the oven, I don't know. Yeah, and then yeah. she goes, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I work with the Sideman. I watch them every Sunday. 
are you joking? And I'm like, no, no, no. I worked with them. Yeah, yeah, it's real. And she's like, wow, 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 wow. And I'm like, would you like a Sidemen football jersey? She's like, from the game this weekend. Y- yeah, yeah, sure. So I go in and I get the jersey that I have in this plastic. And I was here. And she's like, my boyfriend is going to flip out, man. <laughs> and I'm like, she walks off. And I'm just like, this is real. Yeah. Like, the f- that's where I go. Like, I, I have created nothing about this. It's all the boys. Mm. I still feel the pride of like, <laughs> no, like we are part of this journey. Mm. And I say that every time I make a tweet or anything, it's like, I thank all the people that work with me at the company, but it's like, thank you for letting us go on this journey with you. 100%, man. And we fast forward from Side Plus, right? And mm-hmm. for those who don't know, you came in in the role of basically head of Side Plus. That was yeah. what you did. And then you got promoted. Yeah. yeah within our little ink, ink to being the head of content. Mm-hmm. And then from there to then managing director of arcade and then really still the head of content for the Cybermen. So what does that mean? What is your day to day? What's it like running content for the biggest YouTubers in Europe? Hectic, man. And beautiful at the same time. My day to day is very much now about cr- just solving problems for different people within the Cybermen entertainment structure and the arcade media structure. And obviously we overlap constantly so as a managing director of this now it's essentially here's an issue and the arcade media structure being really the the management team the business commercial yeah. engine i call it the then, creative and the boring yeah basically which is uh <laughs> i and i i've said this a lot of times we have a couple of rules that we work around love boring man mm. be boring bro you're either if you're a creative you need to be exceptional if you're good and you're willing to do the boring stuff you just need to be a seven eight out of ten worker 100%. I am a 7 to 8 out of 10 worker. My pure talent is not 10 out of 10. I met those talents. You have a chip fat, for mm. example, the way he looks at a video and it just comes to him. That shit is 10 out of 10, right? You need to be that good. You're a great example. You're, you're, I'm 10 years older than you, which is crazy, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's taken me this time to get to where I am. It's mm. taken you the time that you have. You have raw talent where I have an insane commitment to what I do. Like what JJ says, right, around not being the be- not being the most talented, being the hardest working, which is, you know, there's a lot of truth in that. One thing about your story, which is incredible, is that you left everything behind in Sweden to come and chase your dream and to do what you wanted to do because you believed in it and you believed in yourself enough to take probably the biggest risk that anyone could take. You didn't come from a family with huge amounts of money. Like you, had to, you had to take a leap. And that, regardless of any factor in terms of you know socioeconomic background whatever it might be yeah that's a lot for anyone i still have this text of me arriving in london the night before my mother and my father has to go to work the next Mm. morning so i have sold my apartment right and i remember coming home with two trash bags two black bags and i'm just like and i'm telling my dad like i need to fit all of this into one bag because i want nothing with me it needs to be such a clean slate when i get there Mm. That it's not even like clothes will remind me of my yeah, past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you're like deleting your life up until this point. I'm like, yes, but That's I think I point. need to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like when I woke up that morning, we had said goodbye the day before. And it's this super emotional goodbye because I'm saying goodbye like we say goodbye after Christmas, mm. like a Christmas dinner. And I'm about to go back to my uni accommodation. So I'm going back to my apartment, whatever. But my mother is looking at me like she's saying goodbye. And in the sense of like, this will never be the same. Mm. I don't think you're coming back. I know you. You're not coming back. What was that like? It was so emotional in such a non-emotional way. Like, like this is the right thing to do. I'm I'm doing this for me, and I know this is going to work out. But at the same time, as you say, you're deleting your life up to that point in a way, and you're going to have to always come back to that old hard drive, rather 100%. than being rather than that being who you are today, which is a very different person, I'm sure, to the person that left. Uh, no, I, I was I was young still at that mm. point, right? I was 26, 27. You know, when you get to, I think it's Heathrow. Uh, there is either like the electronic passport check, yeah, but yeah. I just I'm like I, 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 probably if you're if you're moving countries, you probably go talk to a human. Uh, no. So I just walk up to this man, and he's like, "Yeah, all right, what are you here for?" I'm like, S-. and I'm like in my head, I'm standing. What am I gonna say? Holiday? I'm, Holiday? No, 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 no. I go. I'm starting a new life. <laughs> Did you actually? Yeah. <laughs> he's looking at me like, right? Okay. Um, Stab. Just get, <laughs> yeah. okay. Get what? It. He's just looking at me like. What, what are you doing? Like, what do you do? You won't believe it. The luck. I'm working with Fortnite. And he looked at me like, I was like, is this a prank? Uh, and then, do you live somewhere? I'm like, of course not. I'm starting. That's not good. You need an address. And then I'm like, oh shit. So I like, uh, I'm, I've not done my research here. And then I say, wait, I do. And then I remember I've given this house I'm going to live in. And I just read out. I can re- tell it now because I'm living in more. But Fellows Court. I'm going to Fellows Court. And he's looking at me like, I'm going to need more than that. There's a lot of those. And I'm like, right? It's Fellows Court London. in London. And he's like, we, that's what I meant. We're still in London. And I'm like, right. So I guess life's, this is my new life. Yeah. And now it starts. So that was my journey into 
into mm. England. And it's been, I mean, that was five years ago. If you were to sum it up, what is it like to you, for you, sorry, to work with the side men and to work in this machine every day? And also reflecting on your journey where you've come from, what's it like to be here now? Obviously, you have a massive pressure on you because you never want to disappoint the boys. And I have disappointed the boys many times, but I have, I think, impressed and done good things for them way more than I've done mm. this pointing bits. And things will slip, things will go that way. That's how work works. Um, so I think that it's just a constant pressure, but that pressure is also your fuel. They are very much the same. You can look at what Josh tweeted the day after Simon Charity Match. Cool, what's next? Mm. You know, that is his mentality. That is where he sits. Meanwhile, you have someone like Harry, he'll do a Sidemen Sunday and it's like, let's do a fishing trip where we get drunk. Is that the brief? That's the brief. Okay, that's it. What surprised you about working with them? Well, I think the first meeting I had with them, like I was supposed to pitch them from a CV and they were just looking at me like, you don't, no, no, no. Like we're, we're, we're checking your person. Like we're seeing if you are the You know, I remember being on that call and I just remember seeing, oh yeah, a laugh, laugh. Okay, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, I mean, that was my vibe as well. I think yeah. that's still what it is. A lot of the times it'd be like, they walk into a room, I'm there, and I hope that they think, God, not that dickhead. Like, I hope yeah. they don't think that. But I think that I bring a sort of presence in that room to them and they feel like I know what I'm doing. But the surprise is, is that they are so diligent and so firm in showing up and doing. Hmm. Like, I thought it would be a bit more... With talent, many times it's like, they it's their world, they run the world, they show up when they feel like... They might pull up and be like, rappers, it's crazy, right? They'll hmm. have a they'll cancel on you 20 minutes before you're about to start shooting. I don't think I've ever had a cancellation un un unless it's like Josh is getting a birthmark removed. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah, something like that's Vince happening. Yeah, like food poisoning last night and he just cannot It's like come. I have tested positive for COVID my third time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. That's the only time they will pull out of something. That's the biggest mm. surprise for me. Um, and then I think as well that they are, any of the famous people that I've worked with or met, they are the most human celebrities in the world yeah in a normal company where you're not selling entertainment even in a normal company where you are selling entertainment you can watch a tv show and you'll get one laugh out of it mm. but like if you look at the amount of genuine laughter that happens between the boys if you can't see that feel that understand that you're never going to make it i um, mean we have so many great people on this team right now and them, them coming out of the toughest period of their lives probably with the side charity match right but i would go and have dinner with any single person on our team just to mm. like hear them talk about whatever they want to talk about. If we are successful, I will claim this to be a team effort. If we are not successful, I will take responsibility. I get so much praise for the things that you do that my goodwill, my account is so high. Meanwhile, you don't get any of it. So the moment you do wrong, you might be gone. If I could get on a call with the top 10 companies in the world right now, and I would tell them, here's the truth of the matter. Everything that happens from a creative standpoint for the Sidemen Entertainment brand, everything that happened at that charity match, everything that happens with any brand launch we have, anything that happens with any marketing endeavors we do, that is a team of 15 people that the core of that mm. endeavor is, mm. that expands then into 35. You have more people probably working on your, it could be your HR team is probably bigger than that. You know what I mean? Like uh, if I could tell them that what we're doing is this size and if you then put all the mistakes we have in this pile versus this you'd be stupid to claim that it's not impressive mm. i think mm -hmm. and that is not me that is that team mm. uh, same story for the sidemen the amount of output they have versus the mistakes that are made ridiculous ridiculous Mm. like they are operating on on a, on a different and level. that's i think a lot about values and mindset and and creating again that that sense of being part of something bigger than yourself yeah. right and i feel like the side men is i think both for the audience for the community for casual viewers for side plus members but also for the team for us for the freelancers who work around it for the editors it's part of something bigger than them yeah. it's like the side men represent something so big in the culture and represents ch 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 many childhoods many you know sad nights many happy moments and memories it means so much more than just the seven individuals not to minimize them but what they've built is um, it's not i don't want to call it a movement but it's something bigger than that it represents Absolutely. so much to so many people and that's what you see at the ground on on saturday what is your overriding feeling about the match coming out of it now was it a success yes the match is a success but 
at the same time, what you look at when you dissect the game is like, oh, last year's game was a better game, but everything around this was better. So it's like, I think that the weather, unfortunate, but there were little details that like, nagged mm. me now. It's like, oh, why did that happen? But when I look at that, I saw that we, we all went in on Monday after sidecast because we shot a sidecast two days after the charity match. And we gathered about 15 people and we watched the stream back and everyone was just sitting there like, fucking made that. Like that, nah, mm. like that felt good. The team delivered exceptionally on the expectation. Yeah. But you set your, you set your own standard, you make your own rod, right? The yeah. Last year was great, this year was even better. Operationally huge. But I, I, Vic said this, I think after the match, he was like, you kind of become numb to this. Yeah. Like you become numb to 60,000 people. It's like, you have to remember you had 2.7 million people, 2.6 million people, seven across all the different platforms watching this game, like 70 million views in 24 hours. Yeah. It's like, it's hard to really feel that and yeah. to really take that in. And I think that's why it's almost detaching a little bit from that and just being like, look, like I get like Josh's mindset onto the next. You recognize exhaustion once it hits you. Mm. You can go on fumes for a long time. Uh, and when that final whistle, whistle happened, production room, I'm sitting in this white little van right in the parking lot. I haven't mm -hmm. even seen the people inside. Um, you just, I've been in a production room and I've been in a production truck. That's my Simon Charity match. Uh, a hot production truck as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but we, you hear like the voice of the director sitting up there and they're like, are we good to go offline? 10, 9, okay, are we good to go offline? Platforms off, doom, doom, doom. And then it says end stream. And I'm sitting there with the computer, right? Like same story as side plus, I have one button. When I press that, it either works or it doesn't. And mm -hmm. if it does, hallelujah. If it doesn't, I once again, I see Josh's name on my phone or Simon's name on my phone. We're not live. We're about to walk out on the pitch. As they're, as they're in the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like that moment there, when you press the end stream, it's the first feeling is not joy. The first feeling is... Hmm. Then you walk in to the production room. Everyone comes in. There's this solemn moment of silence almost where everyone goes. The next thought is, please, 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 please. I want them to be so proud of this. I hope they had such a good time. This is one of those days. I've, and Theo Baker said it on his post-match uh, video that he went live with yesterday or the day before. I can't recall now. Um, walking out through that tunnel is something that pro football players and like maybe Olympic athletes, but the percentage of mankind that will have had the experience I just had walking out of that pitch is micro. It's the tiniest amount of people. And we gave them that. Mm. That makes me feel really proud. That's a success. And then when you, if we now start talking Wembley next year, we start talking, that stuff doesn't really bother me. We can, we can, we can adapt, we can expand, we can grow. Mm. What I'm more like is like, I want a penalty shootout and I want speed to put the last ball in. Like that storyline starts mm. now. Right, let's play a game. Okay, so I have some cards. Look at the card. Tell me what the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it's two articles from which follow straight on to what we just spoke about. Sideman Charity Match attendance higher than every Premier League round except two. The first thing that comes to mind is I see the school that I went to school at when I was six. And I'm sitting in this little barrack because it was not finished building. <laughs> uh, and we had like a lunch lady come around. And the first thing I think about, every time I get anything that looks crazy, I think of something that was the opposite of it. And I think about that little boy who sat in there who's just getting his front teeth. Like, they were like jagged. And he was part of that. Right, next. So, the, the guy I mentioned prior, uh, this is Power. There you go. Uh, he is a good-looking man, to be fair. He is a good-looking man. Uh, this is me, Power, Jarl, Mert, and Kevin. Kevin worked on the production side at Fnatic. Mert is one of my best friends today. Uh, we were part of what's known as the cave at Fnatic, which was like a deep creative space that existed within it, not necessarily very HR-friendly, but it was a fantastic place to grow creati creatively, uh, creatively. Sorry. The other two are my first two players, alongside my brother. Very good. Next. Oh, my God. Okay. Low-key. This is a tweet by me, 2019. Low key, they try to connect anything negative in the world to gamers. Antisocial, nerdy, wasting your life, disrespectful, lazy, violent. Times will change. Uh, this is not necessarily only about gamers, but it was anyone who was online native. It almost always is about like, they sit in and they play too much video games, they're nerdy, they're wasting lives away. JJ is this guy 
Vic is this guy, and here they are now taking over the world. Mm. So it's just me telling the world, like you, you can, you can say what you want. They have funny haircuts. They dress funny. Maybe they weren't ready to get to the point where they're going to be celebrities yet, but they will take over the world. Mm. Time will change, and I think we're now in the middle of that journey towards that place. Very good. Next. Uh, it's a picture of my mom um, just after her cancer treatment. Big change for the family. Mm. Um, and like my biggest supporter in anything. She doesn't know anything about YouTube, doesn't know anything about gaming, doesn't know anything about that stuff. But she has been like, she's good at one thing. We've spoken about this quite a lot where I'm like, you ask a person who, what their skill is. For me, it's like, I'm good with people and I can push them. I can make them work. You have a creative mind that's ridiculous. My mother knows how to love. That's what she does. She says that. So she works mm -hmm. with children and children. Sorry, she works with children in situations where they can't really integrate into school systems. She takes care of people who can't find their footing in the world, and that's who she is. And she's the kindest woman on the planet. And when she got her sarcoma in 2017, she went on this journey to fight cancer. And like, um, she has one. Like, mm -hmm. she is now cancer free. She goes in on the check ins. But it felt like such a unfair thing. And it's been a big thing in my life has often been, I hate when there's like injustice to someone who clearly didn't deserve it. And my mother is the type of person like, she wrote to me when I was in the production room. Oh, we just saw you on the screen. You walked past the camera. And I'm like, yeah, mom, it's my event. <laughs> uh, but she will still be equally hyped up by mm. it. And um, yeah, my mother is, she is the one who fights for that our family sticks together. And we still have conversations. We now speak very often every week. And she's also my wake-up call. I have done some bad things to very good people in order to get where I am today. And I say bad things in the sense of I haven't listened. I haven't been a good listener. I haven't moved in the way you should move when you start working more. Taking into account that these people were the people who helped you. And I've burnt bridges. And I've tried to like repent for those, those decisions I made. And it's like being a good friend doesn't cost anything. And yes, getting further into your career, if losing your friendship is escalating the speed of which you reach your goal by one year, it's not worth it. You would have gotten there anyway. And that is a younger me getting hungry, feeling like in the middle of its journey. Mm. And my mother was the first one to literally go and she, st she did something completely crazy probably to some people. But I had a rap group when I was 20 and we were the best of friends and we recorded mm. songs and we traveled around Sweden playing as these shitty little bars and stuff. And I lost touch with them. The second year I came back to from home from London, my, first, my second year in London, my birthday is the 25th of December. My mother knows I love Christmas and she has made that a major thing for me. My every year, you're a Christmas baby. I have a tattoo that says, it's a wonderful life right here because that's a Christmas movie with, that has meant so much to me. Whenever I need a happy it's place, it's the best back Christmas there. movie. It's, it's a banger of a Christmas movie. That. I'm sitting there at my birthday and we have the family over my cousins, whatever. There's not a single friend at my birthday because I have decided to go to England. I've not taken care of my friendships and I have other people I still haven't healed with in that capacity. I sh mm. choose career with no work-life balance at that point. Now I finally found somewhere else where I now communicate very clearly with my friends and they've, they, they come over and, and stuff like that, right? But I didn't have any form of relationship with them. And my mother called these people, hounded them and forced them to come to my birthday. So there's a knock on my door when I'm home for these five days for Christmas. And it's Jonas, which is one of the rappers from this group, rappers. Uh, and my mother has ambushed me with my friends and almost said, you say sorry to these people now because you're going to need them future. And that's like, Whoa. I was so angry at her when it happened. Yeah. And I've thanked her ever since because of that happening. Now me and Jonas have a completely different... Did you route. reconnect from that moment as well? Completely. Marcus came, came over to me. We had a great three days in London not too long ago. Jonas is going to be coming over soon. Hopefully together we can do like a group thing as well. I've been back three times to just hang out with them in the studio again. We need an album. <laughs> Listen, uh, get back in the studio. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she, she has made the key decisions that have led me to be a better person. The way my father often has been the opposite of not necessarily a better person, but a better worker. He has taught me what it means to work. As I said before briefly, but it's like, I don't say this to my brother very often. Our relationship is quite strange now, but he is the only reason that I'm here. Last one. 
I laid down on my bed a second ago, looked up at the ceiling and thought about where I am in life right now. Compared it to a year ago and just smiled like an idiot for three minutes straight. Those of you who still struggle, especially young people, be patient. It pays off. This is before the Sidemen even. This is me coming out of 2019. So Fortnite has really established itself now and we're doing really well. I'm loving what I'm doing over at Fnatic. Um, I made some good friends. And this is me also at the middle of like, work was great. My day-to-day was not great a year earlier. I had come out of a tough place. But that was me understanding the value of feeling good about what you do. That has suddenly settled in me, and that's what that is. Mm. But that was also that could have been a follow-up tweet right under that. I said, but at the same time, I'm sorry to the people that I didn't listen to and didn't support. I'll come to you in two years when I've matured and I'm ready. Last yeah. thing, you can open this up. It's a little small thing. What's a gift. There? Jesus Christ. Oh, my days. I just mentioned it. You just mentioned it. I mentioned before Simon Sundays being a safe and happy place, like a comfort zone. Um, to me, that is Christmas which is super off-brand for me. Like I tell people in the office and they look at me and they're like, like what? <laughs> you. And I'm like, it's like 2nd of December mm. and I will suddenly have a coat and a red scarf on and like a bouquet of flowers and walk down the street like, happy holidays, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, and like go into stores, flower, like a florist shaking yeah. hands. You've seen It's a Wonderful Life a bit too much. I've seen them too many <laughs> times. And then it's like nothing can bring me down mm. at Christmas. And it is literally from the moment December 1st, until 25th of December is my favorite time mm. of the year. This one means everything to me, and they'll see it now in the office as well when Christmas comes around. They're, I love things like we do Christmas specials. Mm. Like it gets me literally like, mm. oh, we're gonna. Have I was Christmas. wondering why that set was so well thought through. It's it's yeah. Christmas to me is that's my safe place. That's my harbor. That's where I that's where I like can really just be like, mm. <sighs> and I look forward to having kids and mm. fooling them and giving that back Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Last question, what are your hopes for the future for you from a work perspective? I have this one dream that is always going to be there and that I'm going to have a log cabin at some point in my life, but that's not necessarily connected to my work. I'm sure you can get a log cabin by not working your ass off for 40 years. Hmm. But my hopes are um, with the Sidemen, if you look at them right now, is to make them feel like the legacy that they wanted, we put in enough work to make them feel they got there. That is what I want to do. I have, I call this your 30s, you'll get there eventually. It's like your dreamless age. Uh, your dreams that you have as a child, they're impossible. The dreams in your 20s is wanting to get a solid job. But in your 30s, there's no real dream. So it's like, maybe it is building a family. But building a family, I don't call it a dream. That's more like a goal. Mm. Unless you're unfortunate, you can't have children, right? But like, it's something that is very achievable. But the unachievable things, like when I was 22, I was like, I'm going to win an Oscar. That's a dream. Like, mm. Maybe there'll be a, a a YouTube awards one day. Maybe I can come collect something mm. there. Uh, maybe. But maybe. Uh, but for for my for the thirties, there is no such dream as that. So what I really get my energy and value from is watching someone like Anna and Jas pull this off. Right, that feeds me energy. Uh, whenever we do a big production and works out, that feeds me energy. But my hopes is that I really hope that the side men get to the points they want to be at, and they suddenly feel happy mm. and content, and they end up in a place where they can look back at this and feel like making that call, getting you, getting me, getting Aaron, getting Sam, making that decision that when they did it, mm. that would feed me so much validation uh, from a professional standpoint. So I just want to give them, I hope I've given them that. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think the, the mark of our success as a team is, are they still enjoying it? Yeah. Do they still actually come? Because there's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with that yeah. is not enjoyable. Of course. Oh, and that's our job. And it's the boring stuff that you talked about. But for them, are they still doing this in years to come with a smile on their face and not stressing out about the things that they shouldn't be stressing out about? And if they can enjoy it and we can see that, you know, they're having a good time still, then it shows that we're doing our job. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for them, they look at their body of work. They look at the staff that they have. They look at the event we just did. And I think they talk to their friends and they look at them and say, was it good? Or mm. what we're doing is it good and I hope that people around them who knows them and understands the work they do so other content creators can go and be like bro that was f-ing sick mm. that's what I hope that that, that 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 journey is for me personally I really hope that I can get some more time to go to maybe 
more I went to a Welsh cottage not too long ago. Some more Welsh cottages, maybe. Mm. That'd be nice. Mm. Uh, and I feel we're getting to a point, as I said, work-life balance, friendship versus career. I feel like I found a new place to actually rest and feel comfortable. Mm. And I think that we've gotten to a point where you often speak about this. I, I noticed it now as I took, I had to take a week away mm. or a week and a half away from the, the team. Nothing falls apart, which is a testament to the team exists, the team works. Uh, and it's like if we were to dissect ourselves away from the sidemen, I hope that they still feel like their operations would run smoothly. Yeah. And I think for they them. know we're not doing this for them alone. We're doing this for us mm. as a unit. Mm. Not you and me, Sam and Aaron, but for us and our relationship to the sidemen. Exactly. Uh, and that's what I think they respect as well, because that's why we put so much hour and, and blood, sweat and tears into it. Feels a good place to end. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure. We could have done this all day. Thank yeah. you very much for coming on, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. That was incredible. Everyone in the team, everyone who knows us, knows just how important he is to what we do and just how loved he is by every single person around this whole institution of the Sidemen and Arcade Media. And there's so much that I've gotten from that and I'm sure many of you will do as well. So thank you so much for watching, listening, wherever you're consuming this show. Thank you. Please remember to subscribe, to like, and we'll see you again next week.